Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is the second video in my series on garden for a family of four, but this is applicable to anybody who wants to grow peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers. I'm going to talk about how you set them up, when you start them indoors. I will give you an alternative to growing under grow lights and starting these outdoors even when it's cold. And then the second half of the video will be really talking about this with respect to a family of four and how many plants you want. So we're going to get started with a couple of basics. First thing you want to do is think about when your last frost date is. And that sometimes confuses people because you look online, it gives you different times. You just have to go by your experience. In your garden, when do you think the last date of frost really is? Or when do you think the risk is super low that it's not going to happen? Here in Maryland Zone 7, I pick May 15th. That's the date that I want these plants. There's tomatoes, eggplant and peppers, cucumbers I don't have started yet because it's too early, but I'll talk about those. And you figure out the timing. You count backwards from your last frost date to when you want to start these indoors or you want to start them in these flats and cells and maybe use the outdoors for them to grow. So how do you do it? Pretty simple. I put some numbers down here. Tomatoes, you want to start six weeks before they would go into the ground. So I would go with May 15th in my time, go to April 15th, count back two weeks. So about April 1st, I would start my tomato seeds like this. And I'll talk about the different size containers because that's important. For peppers, it's eight to 10 weeks before that May 15th date. Cucumbers and squash, four weeks. So it would be May 15th, you wouldn't start these about April 15th or so. Eggplant would also fall right into here with the pepper plants, eight to 10 weeks before they would go outside. And in case you've not seen eggplant before, this is what they look like when they're seed starting. You can check out my linked videos in the description to talk about how to set up your seed starting mix, but you basically can use any seed starting mix. I recommend pour, pouring boiling water on it to hydrate it. You definitely want it hydrated. Boiling water helps manage the potential of any kind of fungus gnat problems, but check out the videos that will show you how to set that up. But a nice damp seed starting mix, fill up your cells, push it down a little bit, add in some more. You want a nicely packed cell for starting your seeds. And again, this is a seed starting mix. This is peat moss and vermiculite. You can use cocoa corn vermiculite or any kind of bag that you wish to buy. So this is sitting in a flat. It's called the flat right in here. These are called cells. They're different sizes. If you don't want to use these, I sell all this at my seed shop. It makes seed starting really easy. And I also sell these tags for labeling your plants. You can pick up these foil baking trays, you can use cups. If you use cups, just poke some holes in it. The problem with cups sometimes is they're round, so they're not real stable. So when you move stuff around, they can fall, but they work perfectly. Um, they're as effective, you know, for seed starting as this whole setup here. So you'll notice the cells, the six pack, this cell, this cell are different sizes. This is nice and large. This is perfect for cucumbers squash, zucchini. You want to start these in large containers. I recommend starting them in something like this. Again, I do sell those at my shop or starting them in the cups, something this size, about a 10 ounce cup. You want a lot of soil in there, or you can start them in these two and a half inch pots right there. I will put the seeds down in a second and just show you how we plant, but I want to go over the containers because it's really important. So if you start tomatoes in a cell about this size, six weeks of growth. Let's see right in here. These were started on January 7th. Today is February 10th. This is four weeks of growth. They're going to start outgrowing the cell and they're not quite coiling down at the bottom, but when they get to the point that they coil a lot, they're going to have to be potted up. So you can start peppers, tomatoes, and cucumber. I'm sorry, peppers, tomato, and eggplant. Cucumbers have to be in these bigger pots in a cell like this, but you are going to have to pot them up. Why would you want to start them in here? Well, you can put in 12 of these six cells into this flat. That would be 72 plants. So if you're starting a ton of tomato plants, you're going to want to start in something smaller like this and then pot up. If you have a ton of room, you can just put your tomatoes right in here, your seeds. They can stay in this the whole time, or you can seed start them in this larger container. They can stay in there the whole time. And that's just going to vary on how many tomato plants you want or pepper plants you want and how much space you have to really grow them. So at about four or five weeks, 
This is what tomato plants will look like. This is what eggplant will look like. These are what your peppers will look like. And I recommend, you know, growing two pepper plants in one planting space. You could do it in here, but more importantly, when you go outside, instead of just putting one pepper plant down, this is just a tip, put in two. They're going to grow to full size and you're going to be able to double your harvest. And then right in here, these are micro toms, or I'm sorry, these are tiny tims. They're dwarf tomatoes. They're only going to get about 12 inches tall. These have been growing six weeks and I'm going to grow these indoors for tomato plants. So here's the basic setup. You can choose what size containers you want. Let me drop the seeds down and talk about how you basically plant them for your seed starts. All right, so we covered starting time, basic container size, setting up the seeds, starting mix. Again, check out my video description. I have more in-depth videos on each of those subjects. So at this point, you're going to plant the seeds. I always recommend putting in two tomato seeds. These are going to get thinned down to one or you can divide them and transplant them up. You don't want to just put in one seed and be waiting around for something that's not going to germinate. So you put in two seeds that will pretty much ensure that you get at least one plant. So let's start with the tomato plants. The tomato plants again, we're going to start six weeks before that frost date and I just drop in two. One, two, one, two, one, two. You get the idea. And then I like to use a pencil without a point. And then I just press in the tomato seeds about a quarter inch deep. You don't have to over worry about the exact depth. I've done experiments where I put them all the way down at the bottom of these smaller cells and they end up sprouting just fine. And then once you have them pressed in, just scrape the seed starting mix like that. At editing, I didn't like that my hand covered what I was doing with pressing in the seeds. So tomato seeds, pepper seeds, eggplants, just press them down really a quarter of an inch. And then you would just cover them up. And then same with the cucumber plants or cucumber seeds, push them down about a half an inch deep. Cover them up and you're good to go. And they're pretty much ready to go. Firm it up. We'll talk about watering and lighting after this. Let me slide these back. So these are for peppers, eight to 10 weeks. Same thing for eggplant. The setup would look just like this, just like the tomatoes. One, two, one, two, all the way across. And I won't do them all because I think you get the idea, but I would just press them down quarter of an inch, scrape it over, press them in. And again, these may have to get potted up depending on how quickly they grow, which is perfectly fine. You know, however you want to do it again, if you're doing 72 tomato plants, you probably want to start in something smaller and then you pot up to these bigger containers when maybe you can start moving them outside a little bit. It's all about space management under your grow lights. So you can use these two and a half inch pots. These are uh, squash plants. Squash and zucchini get planted the same way. You're going to press this down about a half an inch to an inch, just like that. Cucumbers, same way. In case you can't see it, two cucumbers, seeds. Half an inch is fine. A little bit deeper, obviously, than the tomatoes, pepper, and eggplant. You just scratch them in, firm the soil. They're good to go. Hard to see, but there's a tomato there. Quarter inch, quarter inch. And you definitely want to label these. You're going to forget. Pepper, quarter inch, quarter inch. And then same process. If you're doing all your cucumbers in a flat like this, we are starting with two seeds. Realistically, both will come up. In theory, you can keep two cucumbers growing in something like this. And then when you get them outside, you can keep two cucumber plants in a planting hole. Two cucumber plants per planting hole works really well, especially if you're growing vertically. And please subscribe and follow. I have videos on vertical gardening, growing your cucumbers up trellises and all that. And then you would firm it down. And then for the squash or zucchini plants, pumpkins would be planted like this. Watermelons would be planted like this. Two seeds. When, if they both come up, thin them down to one. Whatever it looks like the strongest plant after about a week or so of growth, 
remove the other one. You only want to plant one squash, one zucchini into a planting hole outdoors. These plants will get massive. For a family of four, which I'll talk about right after this, this is the basic way to plant tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, cucumbers, squash for seed starting. Now, these would go under my grow lights over there. Grow lights stay on 14 hours and I would just manage these indoors. Because they're going to be growing indoors, in that last week, in that fifth to sixth week of growing indoors, these plants are going to be transitioned outside a little bit. I'm going to take them outside for 30 minutes the first day, 30 minutes the second day, and increase the time over a week because they have to get used to the outdoor sun. If you take indoor plants, just plant them right into your garden, you get a full sunny day, it's going to kill your plants, it's going to burn the leaves. So you have to include a transition of a week's time to let them get used to the UV rays of the sun. If you don't have grow lights, you cannot grow these indoors on a windowsill. But what you can do is take the whole flat out, put it in a sunny area when the temperatures outside are above 40, and then bring them in every night. The warmth of the house at night will keep the soil warm, will keep the roots warm, they're good to germinate, and you're basically just bringing them in and out. Out during the day, when it's 40 degrees or warmer, no freeze, no frost in in the forecast for that day, bring them in at night. By starting them outdoors, you're not going to have to go through that acclimation process. They're going to germinate more slowly. Maybe they need a little bit more time, but you're not going to have to do that transition from the inside to the outside before you plant. The plants that you start with outdoor sun can go right into the garden when you feel that they're ready and you feel your garden soil is ready. All right, that covers planting. Um, this is the setup. Watering is done for indoor plants. You fill this tray up about a quarter of the way when your seed starting mix gets really light, a light brown, it'll absorb water from the bottom and you do that when it's needed. Same thing for the outdoor plant, you just have to keep an eye on it. Feeding any water soluble fertilizer at a diluted ratio, you want to be around a 5, 5, 5 or less N, P and K water soluble fertilizer and after these are growing, after they germinate and they've been growing 7 to 10 days, at least once a week um, put that water soluble fertilizer when you water into the water and they will get enough nutrition. All right, so second part, let's talk about a family of four and what you might grow with these plants or how many you want to grow. So let me get that set up. So for a family of four, what I find is there's not a lot of information on how many plants you should grow. So we're going to cover the plants that we went over today. And I'll just give you some recommendations on how many you might want to grow. You should be able to grow them in a flat like this. If you want more information on seed starting and growing under grow lights, please, of course, check out my channel. I have tons of videos on basically how you do that from start to finish. If you want more information, please check out my book, The Modern Homestead Garden. It covers everything that I talk about in my videos and a little bit more. And it's really designed to help you kind of build an edible landscape on your property. So, a flat this size is probably all you need for seed starting for a family of four. And I'm going to recommend you're going to want to grow um, out in your garden two or three pepper plants. Sweet bananas, bell peppers, the sweet peppers, and then one hot pepper plant. Maybe jalapeno, um, red cayenne, facing heaven. You can pick up seeds at my seed shop if you want to look into that. But two to three sweet peppers, one hot pepper, we'll be able to get that out into the garden. Follow me in the series, I'll show you how to do all that. For tomatoes, you're only going to really need to grow three plants. I recommend one cherry type, um, one mid-sized tomato, like maybe baseball size. And if you really love tomatoes, pick out some sort of heirloom or maybe that two pound tomato plant, something pretty cool. But, you know, at least one cherry tomato plant and then one baseball sized tomato. Um, whatever variety you want kind of in that range. Eggplant, one eggplant. I recommend the Black Beauty. That's your standard eggplant that you see. It stores a lot and you would just grow one plant indoors and that's going to go outside. That pretty much covers peppers, tomatoes, and eggplant. Now, when you're talking about squash or zucchini, you're probably only going to want one squash plant. These are yellow crookneck squash. They're summer squash or a green zucchini, which is the standard zucchinis you see in stores. But just one plant of each of those. When everything looks small, you think you can, you know, certainly pack it into your garden, but once production starts, it can be a lot to take care of. 
um, they can outgrow the garden and then you run into problems. So just one yellow squash, one green zucchini is all you need. For cucumbers, there's two types, basically pickling type, the shorter cucumbers. These are national pickling. You could put, like we did in the video, two seeds are in here. If they both come up, these go into one corner of your garden. That's enough cucumbers for the pickling size. We'll be growing those vertically. And if you want, you know, the longer cucumbers, like the uh, eight inch cucumbers, 10 inch cucumbers, you can pick whatever variety you want with that. I would only do one plant of the longer cucumbers, like the market more. That will set you up with the basic plants that most people enjoy in a garden. And then with the series ongoing, we'll talk more about putting in herbs, putting in radishes, cool weather crops, and stuff like that. But I just wanted to cover seed starts. You can certainly go and buy everything we talked about at your big box stores, at nurseries. They're going to cost you about anywhere from, if you're lucky, $2 a plant up to $4 a plant. So you can you know, just buy your transplants that way. But if you want to grow them inside, this will give you a good idea of how many plants you want to be starting. And if you want to grow more, grow more, maybe give them to family and friends. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the video and I will answer that. I answered just about 95% of every comment left on the video. Thanks for watching. I hope this gives you some ideas on how many of these different plants you might want to seed start or put out into your garden. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and if you're looking for a resource, please check out my book, The Modern Homestead Garden. Thanks for watching.